Welcome back. It's time for our final best of five here to see who's going to be the last player in the round of four. Will it be parting? Will it be Sue? It's actually really hard to say because Sue played some fantastic ZVPs. He was really on top. He knows what he's doing. So our last um, best of five, Mara won very convincingly. I mean, tactically, Mara is the superior player. Just, I would say overall he is. Uh, Jokchi, though, showing that he's he's not really that far below Maru. Like, he's Jokchi is still got it. Or maybe he's got it again, I guess, is actually the way to say it. Yeah, you know, Maru um, and Jokchi in that last series, they were darting all over the place, mm -hmm. uh, attacking into each other. Um, and it, it, Maru just was always able to be one step ahead. And it, when, even when he got behind, then he'd make two more steps to get that lead. And here we have Sue and Party, two teammates, Party the world champion from last year. Well, hmm, Parting, who do you think here? This is this is a really tough one for me. I'm going with Party. I don't know what the score will be. Okay. I think it's going to be close. Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's. Because they are teammates, who knows if it'll be like really high-end, cutting-edge stuff or not. Uh, that's a cool, I like that sign. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that looks just like parting. <laughs> yeah, it's <all>. uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, I have gained so much respect for this I guy's play this so season. So much respect for him. Whoa, that's yeah. super funny. Thank you. <laughs> um, so... What will they do? How will they play in this? That, that, that's the tough part to call because, mm. frankly, uh, when you have two teammates, there's a lot of mind games we don't get to see because we're not in the training house with them all the time. And We uh, don't know if in practice yeah. Sue always beats Parting with this one trick, so this time Parting's going to do some strategy Sue hasn't seen yet. Perhaps. It could be. Uh, we really don't know how this will go down, but... You know, Sue, he, he's impressed me a lot lately with his play. This season, he's playing fantastically. He's been a strong Zergen StarCraft 2 for a bit. Like, the last few seasons, he's looked good overall as his, he's made his rise. And he's looking better than ever now. But Parting, uh, you know, I, I think you have to name him as top two Protoss in the world. I think you have basically no choice. Like, you could only maybe argue that First could be up there as well. I would still put Parting ahead or of First. perhaps Sora, my new man crush. CJ Antisora. You know, with, with Parting, he's got such a solid play style. His build orders are so incredibly tight. Mm. But unlike Rain, he is okay being the aggressor. Oh, God, yes. He's He prefers it. He's got some of the best micro best execution in the world. Some of. Ooh, Parting. 2 and 7 versus Zerg lately. I guess the Immortal push doesn't work anymore, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize he was doing that poorly against Zerg as of late. Well, when you look at who he's playing here, like, he has wins and losses against Sulky, the best Zerg in the world, and then the some of the other best in the world, like Symbol, Roro, Life, are yeah. the other people that he's playing, even his teammate here, Sue. That is that is just like a roll call of the greatest Zerg players. With Sue, uh, he's got actually some of the best ones in there as well. Uh... Yeah, I mean, SOS, Paralyze is very good. Flying, he's retired now, but he was playing very well. Young Hua, of course, a godly Protoss in his own right. Even though, sadly, he lost today. Well, he is the tragic uh, hero of StarCraft too, man. <laughs> I feel he so really bad. is. He's Our map lineup guy. is going to be Belshir, Vestige, Derelict, Watcher, Akalon, Wastes, Whirlwind, and Yunsu. Coolness. All right, uh, looking at this map lineup, Generally speaking, I would say that, yeah, I would give a slight edge to Sue on this set of maps in this order. I think Derelict is a Sue map. Akalon can go either way, and then Whirlwind Yonsu. Uh, this is actually really good, uh, the more I think about it. For a ZVP, I think this is a really nice set of maps well, that, in this order. that middle section there, yeah, that's going to be mm. very good for Sue. But you never know, Young Hua is very good at preparing, not just for the map, not just for the player, not just for the race, the whole thing. Well... We'll see uh, how this goes, Tasteless. Belshire Vestige, our first map, a very small map. Have to say that it's a bit parting favored. I, I think that this map is P favored versus Zerg. It's, the Zerg has to expand towards Protoss stuff. It gets pretty tough in the lightning. It's time to start our final best of five here in the round of eight. One of these two pros is going to go on to the round of four and be that much closer to being a champion in this year's final GSL Codex. I'm going to see the Ryan Scorpion.
In the upper left starting location, we have our Zerg player. He is SK Telecom T1, Sue. His opponent down here in the bottom right, also his teammate, the Protoss. He is SK Telecom T1 parting. A lot of parting support here in the audience. Now that there's not Sue support here in the audience, there's definitely people cheering for both. Mm -hmm. uh, we see that parting is actually going to open up with a uh, Nexus first here, Tasteless. And that is, you know, it's it's very interesting to watch what order in a best of five Protosses will do their different types of expansions on. Like, well, do they a do a, a Nexus first with the scout? Oh, okay, this is actually an offensive cannon. All right, more people from Germany. Oh, everybody's from Germany or Austria. <laughs> Either that Holland, or we're in the Holland. same signs of different. There's Holland. The that guy. We have Holland back there. Yeah. yeah. I missed that part. Sorry, guy from Holland. Yeah. Whatever, they're all I can't tell if everybody is from Germany or Austria. We're getting the same, like, three guys with different signs. Yeah. It's also fake possible. mustaches and stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, this is... Okay, let's take a look. It's hatchery first play. <clears throat> Parting is gone for the cannon. And here we go, Tasteless. So, uh, this is a scenario in which Parting should basically just take it. Yeah, because... Now... Okay. Now what you can do here is you this actually walls off entirely, so you can make a cannon back here. Now, uh, if I'm Zerg, I'm going to be canceling here because there's... Oh, that was pretty nice. Do you want me to tell you what this reminds me of? This I reminds think I'm, I'm me thinking, of when I'm thinking of two other match. teammates played in the round of four. SOS and Sulky. Yeah. Reminds me of that just a little bit. As well, in now, all the way. And now we got... He should be canceling, though. He should cancel. Well, I, he's not bringing down he'll, drones either. Here. He has to cancel. You actually just can't hold it. Yeah, there's just no way. And there. whoa. Okay, all right. All right. So uh, he did cancel, and that's very, very important. Now, how much did Parting truly spend on this? He let finish, I believe, three structures. It looks like a pylon and two cannons, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, that's uh, two sure. pylons, two cannons. It has to be. Oh no! Uh, one pylon and, and two. Yeah, cannons. I think I think that's it. Uh, yep, one yeah, one pylon, okay. two cannons. Okay, so that's. You know, he forced a cancel. He kind of made him expand to two places that are kind of hard to uh, punish correctly. Now, what is the follow-up here from parting? Because sometimes well, we see Protosses uh, go into like a a seven gate type of attack from here? Like sometimes, uh, you know, because they have that pylon in the natural that they can warp into right before it gets killed a lot of the time. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, when they do that, I feel like they just don't hold that often. You I know, mean, I, they, they, don't, they don't kill the Zerg with that that often. I, I prefer them going into Stargate from here personally. Here's one of the problems uh, for the Zerg right now is he has three different locations to defend from, and there already is a proxy pylon in play. So if he does go for that mass gate at the start, I mean, how can Zerg hold all of these locations? You know, he's, yeah, already, exactly. he's already had a hiccup, um, a big one there for mm. uh, his income. <clears throat> the queen is going to have to go all the way down <laughs> to this uh, location in the upper Quite right. a long walk. It is. Especially for a queen. And so... Some Zerglings should help it cross the street because it's walking like an old woman. <laughs> um, I, if, if I'm him, I, mean, I know you said Stargate. I prefer the mass gates. And it's going to be Stargate, all right? He's going to yeah. go with you, Artosis. Now, the mass gates, the thing is, I feel like that always gets held. And then you're on seven, you're like against a three base Zerg that's spread out with an easy fourth now with gateway tech. Whereas these bases are so far apart that queens can't go and help each other. Each base has to be independent on its anti air. That's and that very makes true. Stargate openings, in my opinion, uh, a better choice. I, I like them more, at least. I don't know. I, I, I see what you're saying here. And, um, by the way, the Zealot uh, and the Stalker are going to try to engage mm. his Queen over here. Yeah, he's really focusing on hitting that Queen as much as possible. Of course, he'll take some drone kills, but, you know what, if he can deal extra damage to that Queen, it's easier to kill off with an Oracle, with a, a Void Ray, whatever it is that he sends over. 
You want to bruise up those queens. He's got three more gates coming here. The uh, Overlord, which will be sacked, uh, does see exactly what the Protoss has in store here. Another proxy pylon is going down. And, uh, hmm. All right. The, you know, he has three gates about to finish. He's getting a couple more gas. I, I wonder if he's going to do a round of Zealot Warpins at the natural and try to harass with that. I'm not so sure. All right, he's going to back up here. It feels like what he's planning, at least. Warpgate is you know, just about to finish. This is going to be pretty tough here for Sue, man. He is going to go for that one base in the center left location. As you said, that queen bruised. Mm. Um, and of course, the warp gates are all about to be up and running. So, yep, there it is. He's going to go ahead and ah. get these zealots out here. Makes and a lot of sense. Zerg has not been able to scout this. You can see he's trying to. He sent lings around. And we don't actually have any spores. Okay, there we go. He started making spores. So that's really good. Because if he didn't have any spores here, this would be a, a real issue. Because just nonstop, the phoenixes would be able to help out at each base. Now, more zealots are warping in down near that. I don't know what we call that. The third? <laughs> the, the, the natural? Uh, it's definitely not the natural. <laughs> now, this is going to be almost impossible here for Zerg to hold. Mm. Overlord's being hit here. That will supply cap to Zerg right now. And uh, on top of that, so many Zealots in are doing so much damage. Now the Zerg is supply blocked. And this is going to be really tough. I love that picking up the Roach, by the way, because the Roaches are actually what's strong against the Zealots, not the Zerglings. And he's going to have another pickup, most likely, here on that next Roach. Or not. Mm, or you could grab the Queen, maybe just take out some more of these Overlords. The Zealots going to town on absolutely everything. A tough situation for Sue here. He's taking way too much damage at this base. And other zealots continue to come in now. Now, it looks like he might hold the hatch here. But, I mean, the yeah. workers, so many were killed off. Yeah, and the, the and amount of overlords. That, yeah, uh, I was about to say that. Yeah, the overlords here. The forcing, the, like, that's a lot of overlords. Oh, man, to actually be making all those overlords of that base, that's a tough, that's a tough one right there. Um, you know, saving the hatch doesn't even matter compared to everything else that's happened to him here. This yeah. Is we got Void Race being cranked out here, and the Colossus tech is on the way. I can't believe how much damage Sue has, has taken so far. Mm. Too far. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> now. And, I'm uh, trying to think of a good parting pun, but I can't come yeah. up with one. Wow, 11 overlords killed, 25 drones killed. That's not really something you come back from, I would say, Tasteless. Uh, yeah, a few more gates, and I think this is where that gateway timing comes up. Mm. The amount of kills here, and I, you know what, honestly, I'm even surprised right now Sue's attacking these cannons right now. Yeah, of all that's the kind points, of weird. I mean, it's not... Actually, I guess he needs to get rid of the pylon. That has to be the only... That's the only thing yeah, that I Yeah, but I mean, think. You, this, this is, um, next attack is inevitable. And, excuse me, for the amount that he's lost there. I mean, mm. look, now Parting's playing smart, right? He's taking his third base uh, because he knows he basically can't be killed right now. His army's playing big. He basically big can't and, lose right and, now. Yeah, and this is the one way to really make sure. Like, if you go on a two-base attack and everything goes wrong for a long time, maybe Sue comes back there. But if you have three base and you go, like, even if you lose your army, you just remake it, right? Right. <laughs> Whereas on two base, uh, you're kind of, kind of screwed if you lose it all. So, uh, from here... What do you do with Sue? He's got like nothing, man. Look at this. 57 drones of 51 probes. He's got like 10 hydras and 4 roaches. Oh yeah, scary army. Uh-oh. Could lose these phoenixes minutes. here. Oh, that's, that's pretty good, I guess. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, now, uh, the angle in which he can attack from here, off from that third base, uh, it's going to be pretty tough for the Zerg to hold this. I mean, He's got the force fields. He's got the Colossi there. Uh, the Phoenix is in the Void Ray. He could pretty much zone out this army. In fact, he doesn't even have to engage the Zerg army if he doesn't want to. Well, here comes that Zerg army. This He's got way too many force fields. His, his composition is way too strong to actually lose uh, this little group of Hydras and a couple of Roaches. Nice force fields going down, zoning everything out. Uh, this Colossus is just doing so much damage to these Hydras right now. Uh, that should be GG, and we should be going into game number two here. GG. Sue loses. Uh, it started with that cannon rush. Mm. It transitioned to that zealot attack and the, uh, what I guess we want to call it the third base here. And it ended with that nice timing there for parting. Sue never really stood a chance. 
You know, he didn't. Uh, at least he canceled the hatch at the natural. That was good to see. But you got to be careful going on a specifically Belcher Vestige hatchery first because there are behind the gases. You can just do a cannon rush that drones can't stop. So yeah, uh, if you go for that, I feel like you got to be like DRG. You got to be patrolling around with the drone, keeping it on top of everything. Yeah, because if you right click on that probe the second it comes in, generally speaking, the cannon rush is already defeated. Yeah. Our next map is going to be Derelict Watcher. Now, this should be a map that's pretty good for Sue. Yeah, it's it's pretty hard for a parting to actually take his third correctly here, and Sue has shown us that he knows how to play against people who do that. So, does parting counter that by going for a two-base all-in, perhaps? He could. Hmm. It's certainly a possibility. Well, we'll think Sue's going to win this? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Sue will take this one. I think on this map you should be able to. Mm -hmm. But never count Parting out, you know, he's very good. If you're just now joining us, Parting is up one game. This is a best of five. The best of five to decide who will be our final player here in the round of four in the GSL Code S.